Hello everyone and welcome to Drop Tales. Today I'm going to talk about my JLPT in one studies because my JLPT in one information postcard just arrived, which means there are only about two weeks left before the test as of filming this video and I'm not entirely ready. So this is what the JLPT in one, oh, not just the N1, but the JLPT postcard looks like. You can see here it's got the date. I'm taking mine on uh, December 5th, uh, what time I need to arrive at, and what time it starts. And then on the inside, there is more information. I'm going to be taking at the Gifu Shotoku Gakuin University, Gifu campus. And unlike the the lower level tests with the N2 and N1, you just have two large chunks. Well one large chunk for everything that is reading and one that is the listening. So it is quite the two hour testing marathon. So last year I took and passed the JLPT into in the winter after a year and a half of study. I really, really wanted to take it in the summer. I always take the summer test, but because of the coronavirus in 2020, all of the JLPT exams in Japan were canceled, which it was probably a good thing for me because I passed very comfortably. I didn't have like a fantastic score, but I also didn't like barely pass. I kind of had like a very middling score and I'm kind of worried that if I had only studied for a year, maybe I wouldn't have passed. But I mean, I'm still only taking the N1 after only a year. Um, so I'm not actually very confident that I will pass. So I'm going into this exam kind of with the mindset of this is a practice test and I will take the test more seriously in summer. I'm taking my studies very seriously because if I do happen to pass, then that will be fantastic. The reason for this mindset is like if I fail, usually I become very, very, very discouraged. And like if I think of it as a practice test, it'll not be quite so stressful and like discouraging if I fail. If I fail, I want to be able to keep studying and not feel like doom and gloom. So that is the main reason for my, you know, practice test mindset. So now I'm going to show you all my study materials. So first I'm going to show you all my books. The first books I'm going to show you all are the Nihongo Soumatome in one books. And I use the vocabulary, the grammar, and the kanji book. Though I primarily use the grammar book because I prefer using apps for vocabulary and kanji. So the, I have all of these digitally on my iPad, uh, which suits me very, very well because Japanese homes are not very big. And I often study outside of the home, especially at work. Right now I work as an ALT in schools, so I do have quite a bit of downtime. So each book is broken up into seven part units. You're supposed to study one part a day, then take the unit test on the seventh day. Now, like I said before, I have a job and I am busy, so I really like the way this is broken down. Also, it has English translations. While it's not necessary, it does make studying much more efficient for me. The other series that I really enjoy is the Shinkansen Master, in one book. This time I'm only using the Dokai book. The Kanzen Master books are much more thorough than the Soumatsume books, but that density can make for slower studies. I really like these books and recommend them if you have the time to go through them. The Dokai book presents the different kinds of reading comprehension questions that will appear on the N1 and teaches strategies for how to handle and solve them. Since there's a ton of reading that you have to do in a short amount of time, I feel much more confident about doing the reading portion of the test after reading and learning these strategies. The third book that I like to use is the Patan Betsu Tete Drill book for N1. This book has example problems for every part of the test, so I think it's extremely handy. It even has a CD in the back for the listening portion of the test. I've used this particular book for every level of the test from the N4 to now the N1. And one thing that I like about this book is that the questions, in my opinion, are a little bit harder than the actual JLPT test questions. 
since it contains a wide range of questions, this is usually the book I take with me when I go to work to study during my downtime. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the apps that I use to study. The main apps that I use are Sticky Study Japanese, Midori, and also Wanikani, which is actually a web app. Now, all of these apps that I use are not free. For me, I think these very handy paid apps are worth the money that I paid to get them. The first app I'm going to introduce is Sticky Study Japanese. Sticky Study is an SRS flashcard app you can use to review vocabulary and kanji for every JLPT test level. I primarily use it for vocabulary. My favorite thing about it is that it has a lot of handy visuals to keep you on track for the test. You can enter the date you want to finish studying the vocabulary by, and it'll tell you how many cards you need to study each day. You can see that I'm very behind. I also think it's pretty nifty that you can see every card's status crammed into one page. Like for some reason, seeing all these cards slowly turn green is just so satisfying and helps me keep going. The next app I'm going to introduce is Midori. Midori is a dictionary app. My favorite features about it are the input methods and also the bookmark to flashcard functions. You can type, search by radicals, or use your finger to write the kanji on the screen to look things up. Also, you can bookmark things to study later. Once you have a list of bookmarks, you can send them straight to the built-in flashcard app to review. It's just so smooth that I love it. Midori cost $10 when I got it years ago and I love it. And the last app I use is Wanikani. Wanikani was made by the people at Tofugu. This app uses an SRS system to help you learn the kanji. It starts off teaching you the radicals and gives you a handy little story to kind of help you remember the meaning. And then from there it builds up to the readings. And then finally, you can start reinforcing your memory by studying some vocabulary that use the kanji. I know many people who have tried this app and in the earlier levels, they're just like, oh my god, it's so slow, I cannot stand it. But trust me, when you get up to around level 20, it becomes like kanji jigo. You have so many reviews every day. Wanikani is quite expensive, but the first three levels are free if you would like to give it a try. And that's it. That's all of my study materials. I do also talk to my Japanese teacher once a week for about an hour just to kind of reinforce the grammar in my mind. Uh, I spend most of my time doing self-study though. I do not go to a Japanese school, just books, apps, and then one hour a week with my Japanese teacher. So what do you think? If you're also studying for the JLPT, feel free to comment below with your own study methods and favorite books. I would love to see how you guys are getting ready for the test. And as usual, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Bye bye!